G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. As we continue this series I've been doing where we do short videos doing a profile on individual prospects ahead of the 2024 AFL Draft. If you wanna see other players I've done in this series, click in the top right corner of this video and you'll find the playlist to every player that I've done so far. Members of this channel do have early access to those videos. And on that note, I wanna give a special shout out to our newest member, Stallon. Thank you so much for jumping on board. Today in this series, we have Cooper Hines from the Dandenong Stingrays, a 190 centimeter midfielder forward. And he's a very interesting prospect and a very well-performed prospect. The sort of guy who genuinely impacts consistently and is one of the most clearly dual position players in this year's draft, I reckon. How to describe him, he's 190 centimeters and he uses that as well. So he's very powerfully built. So when he's playing as a midfielder, he's a very contested, powerful midfielder. And when he's up forward, he actually uses his height to advantage and he is a genuine scoreboard threat when he plays there too. There are plenty of prospects that are 190 centimeters, but aren't able to use that height to some degree of advantage. This guy is genuinely strong overhead. And like I said, very well performed. He played 15 games for the Stingrays this year, averaged 20 24 disposals and on top of that kicked 23 goals across those 15 games. His total stat line was 23 goals, 12 behinds, 23.7 disposals, 7.5 score involvements, nearly 5 clearances a game and he finished runner up in the Morris medal behind Xavier Lindsay. So again just an incredibly well performed player that I'm a little surprised isn't talked about more seriously as a first round prospect but we'll get into that. In the National Carnival he played more as a forward for Vic Country, averaged 16 disposals a game, 5.2 score involvements and kicked 4 goals across those games games as well. So he's got that big powerful frame at 190 centimeters and could potentially grow further you'd think. And he uses that in the midfield being a very contested focus style midfielder. He's not the best athlete per se. He's a very inside grunt focus type of midfielder. And when he goes forward, he's a genuine one-on-one -on -one threat with his strong contested game. So he's got a lot of attributes you want in a genuine inside midfielder, clean hands, good vision. He's generally quite slick. And he's got those physical advantages and that ability to absorb pressure and break off tackles. But he's actually quite a consistent player as well. So his best disposal tally this year was 35 and his best goal tally this year was a bag of five goals. So there's not too much doubt that he has the ability to play both roles. In terms of that consistency though, his lowest disposal count was 16 this year and across the 15 games he played for Dandenong, he only recorded less than 20 possessions three times, which is not bad going for a guy who does spend time in the forward line. Like I said, he's not necessarily the most athletic in terms of speed and endurance and unfortunately we didn't get to see him test at the combine because he did an ankle injury. I also read that that back end of the season is where we recorded I think all three of the occasions where he had less than 20 disposals and that was a, during a period where he was nursing that injury. So to rattle off his general pros and cons you have to go with the dual positionality. He's a genuinely versatile player, dangerous in both roles. He's a good inside mid clearance player and very consistent with his production as well. He's got that power which helps him be a genuine forward threat so when he's close to goal he's able to use those strong hands to grab marks. In terms of weaknesses while he is a very consistent player week to week sometimes that four quarter consistency can be lacking, that can sometimes be due to the fact that you play in the forward line too. But on top of that, running capacity is a little bit of an issue here. So we're talking about a player who was very well performed, puts up great numbers, genuine threat in terms of scoreboard impact, probably doesn't have that built capacity yet as a natural runner to get from contest to contest to really accumulate possessions. He does his best work on the inside. But he does have pretty good football IQ while not necessarily being the most prolific athlete. And he's got good composure, gets himself out of trouble. I suppose you could say one concern perhaps is given that he is so strong at the moment and as an 18 year old is so much bigger than a lot of the midfield counterparts he's playing against. Does that advantage hold true at AFL level too? And I'd imagine it's probably gonna take him a little bit of time before he's really impacting at AFL level. Sometimes these young contested midfielders do stay Step up to the AFL and thrive instantly. Guys like Harley Reid, obviously, and George Wardlaw is another one that comes to mind. But sometimes they take a little bit longer, so it just remains to be seen. Will he have that same size advantage at AFL level? He certainly won't initially. He's a difficult one to assess where he's going to go, and I think there's a fairly wide range on this. So up until this point, sort of in the late 20s, has been considered a general consensus on what his ranking is. But I could see the possibility for him bolting a little bit and could be a contender in the mid to late first round. And the reason being is probably just to looking at the other prospects available at that range of teams selecting in those late teens are looking for a midfielder. He could certainly be one of the best of the next group of mids outside that top 15. So we know that the top 10 to 12 to even 14 perhaps it's going to be pretty midfield heavy. Past that, if you're picking in the late teens, like a lot of non-Victorian clubs are in this year's draft, if those teams are looking for a midfielder, Cooper Hines may stand out as the best prospect amongst a lot of key forwards like your John T. Falls, your Job Shanahan's. So long story short, I do think he could come into calculations for certain teams as high as the late teens. 
As an Eagles fan, I wouldn't be absolutely shocked if he's in the consideration for pick 12 at the moment, purely because he is a midfielder. Although that would be as early as anyone has suggested he will go. So I'd say anywhere between 15 to 30 as it currently stands. It's highly likely given the fact that he probably needs to build that endurance tank at AFL level who starts his career as an impact forward who could potentially play through the midfield. But I think the dual positionality of someone like a Cooper Hines does sort of work against some degree of risk clubs have when looking at it as a prospect. So let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think? Do you want your club to draft Cooper Hines? Let me know in the comments other players you want to see in the series. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you the next one. Cheers.